Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got a video where we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. Uh, one is the ship's command histories, which are very cool primary sources that we've got. Uh, and the other one is replenishment. You guys ask all the time about specific numbers. How much food did they eat? How much fuel did they burn? How far did they sail? Et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, so I am at the ship's refueling boom right now. This was installed in the 1980s to refuel other vessels from the battleship. And I've got the ship's 1986 command history right here. And we're gonna go through this and read some of the numbers that are in it because they're, they're quite fascinating. So the command history is uh, pretty much a narrative of what happened in an individual year for one command, in this case, Battleship New Jersey. The command history, uh, we have none for the 1940s or uh, the 1950s. Although for the 1940s, we do have cruise books and a document called the War Log, which is a sort of curated uh, version of the deck log. In the 1950s, we've got nothing like this. And then during our Vietnam commission, we see for Battleship New Jersey, the first command histories. And there's two for that, 68 and 69. And then we've got them for the, the various years of the 1980s that the ship is in service. Uh, so it seems like these documents are, uh, start to be produced in the 1960s as something for the uh, crew to have. Although I have seen some that are marked classified and then later marked declassified. So I'm not quite sure what the purpose of these files would have been if not for the distribution to the crew to remind them of all the cool things they did. But uh, one of the cool things is the back of most of these command histories will then go through the different departments and list statistics that those guys kept during their career. So let's talk about that today. So the, the last section of this Significant statistics for 1986, calendar year, CY, 1986, USS New Jersey, BB-62. Total nautical miles steamed in 1986, 20,484.3 uh, nautical miles steamed on this ship. So that's how far the ship went in a single average year. Notice 1986, the United States is not at war with anyone. Uh, the battleship doesn't do any massive cruises. She, she does a West Pack and she does some training stuff, but not like a round the world cruise or anything weird like that. Um, and her 20,000 mile uh, cruise is enough to go around the world about a third of the way, a little bit over a third of the way around the earth. Next stat is the fuel the ship received, 6 million gallons. Now, an Iowa-class battleship will typically hold about 2.4 million gallons of fuel, and that's typically good for a month of steaming at economical cruising speed, about 15 knots. Uh, and at that month of steaming, you can go about 15,000 nautical miles on 2.4 million gallons of fuel. So the fact that the ship only goes 20,000 nautical miles and receives 6,000 gallons of fuel tells us either the ship is going much faster than that, which seems weird in peacetime, uh, or they're doing something else with the fuel. Also, 6 million gallons out of uh, 2.4 million gallons, that means that we only used about two and a half, two and three quarters uh, tanks of gas during the entire year, which would imply that we were only steaming for about a third of the year. The rest of the time we would have been in port. Uh, next up down here, I'm going to skip over a couple of these and come back. Fuel transferred to other units. Remember, we received 6 million gallons of fuel in 1986. We transferred uh, 700,000 gallons of fuel. So that's the whole purpose of this. The battleship can carry so much fuel that uh, she was often used to refuel the other ship's in her uh, battle group. So that's 700,000 gallons of fuel, about uh, a third of our total capacity we transferred to other ships during this cruise. Next, we get some uh, cool stats on the number of rounds fired. 
221 16 inch rounds. These would have all been in training. So in an average year without any combat, 221 16 inch rounds fired. Remember the ship can hold about 1200 rounds total at a time. So this is a fraction of the magazine capacity. Uh, and remember as built, the 16 inch guns can fire about 300 rounds before they have to be relined. Now by the 1980s, that's not a thing anymore. Even assuming she fires all 221 rounds out of a single barrel, that's not enough to need to reline the gun. So that's not a huge amount of uh, projectiles, even though we're talking about about 250 tons of 16 inch ammunition. For five inch rounds, she fires 1144, also a relatively small number. Uh, and from the CWIS, the Phalanx Close and Weapon System, she fires 7,096 rounds. During this year, the ship's flight deck has 487 landings, 450 of which are during daytime, and 37 of which are nighttime landings. And these helicopters transfer 350 people across the flight deck. Total flight hours for the ship's embarked air group, which is probably just a single helicopter at this point, is 886. So that's more than enough for qualifications and some of this other stuff they're doing. Vert rep loads. How many vertical replenishments did the ship do? Uh, 465. This was something that was pioneered during the Vietnam War that the crew continued to do in the 80s. And how much helicopter gas did the ship need to use for those 886 flight hours? 16,516. So remember, this is 1986 dollars. Uh, this page is sales and ship service. $222,000 were generated for the Welfare and Recreation Fund. So this is uh, donations to the ship and uh, things that you get from marking up the products sold in the ship store above uh, what you buy them for. Since the Navy isn't trying to make money off of their stores, anything that a ship store makes extra goes into the Welfare and Morale Fund or the Recreation Fund, and then it can be used for things like uh, doing recreation when you're in port, having televisions on board the ship when she's in service, things like that, Ad adding things, um, the gym equipment that the ship had in her at least three gyms that were operated in the 1980s are paid for out of the Welfare and Recreation Fund. The washers and dryers used to wash the crew's civilian clothes, because you couldn't wash them in main laundry with your uniforms, comes out of the Welfare and Recreation Fund. So 222,000 generated for that. Total sales in the ship, $120,615.19. Some of these sales come from 790,000 cans of soda sold from the soda machines. 97,000 video games played. So this seems to imply something that I hadn't realized before. The ship would have had probably coin-operated uh, video game machines, probably paid for out of the crew morale fund, and then the 97,000 quarters paid towards that uh, go back into the crew morale fund. So that's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, 300,000 candy bars consumed. 21,000 ball caps sold. The ship's crew would have been about 1,600 during this time. So what are they buying 21,000 ball caps for? Surely they aren't losing them that frequently. You give them away as presents. You give them away when you run into other ship's crews. Uh, that, that's a top seller in our ship store nowadays. So it's no surprise that they sold basically 10 ball caps for every sailor on board. The average payroll per month for the ship's crew was $900,000 in 1980s money, and that totals to $10.8 million dispersed as part of the ship's payroll in 1986. The value of the provisions consumed, $1.2 million, and the number of individual meals fed over that year, 930,000. Remember, this ship serves four meals a day when at sea, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and mid-rats, because the crew uh, is working around the clock. Engineering, 
had to rewind 57 out of about a total of 1,000 motors in 1986. That's not bad given how old most of those motors are. Uh, they installed over 900 fluorescent lights. Well, there's uh, probably somewhere between five and 10,000 fluorescent light fixtures. So only having to uh, relamp 900 of them, not bad at all. They had to replace 3,285 feet of high pressure piping. So this is steam lines uh, for the ship's propulsion plant. That is what you would expect to see out of a ship that in 1986 is uh, over 40 years old. They produced 750 wood presentation plaques. These were probably made in the ship's carpenter shop. So our last page, uh, Dentals Records. They performed 2,283 restorations. I'm not quite sure what that means from a dental point of view. Uh, examinations they performed 4,252. So that's at least two per sailor over that year and then some. Cleanings, 2,513. So that's more than one for every crew member. Extractions, 328. So that's 328 teeth pulled. Total patients seen by dental in 1986, 6,867. So that would be about uh, three times the number of the crew or the crew coming in three times. So that would make sense if there's two examinations and a cleaning uh, each year. Not entirely sure how that works. Don't ask me how long it's been since I've been to a dentist. Uh, and awards earned during Westpac 86. The ship got a gunnery white E, a communications green C, an electronics warfare EW, and a CIC green E. So, that is just some of the information contained in our 1986 uh, command history for the ship. Hopefully these numbers answer some of your questions about, hey, how much did she go in an average year? How much did she do in an average year? Uh, and we've got probably a dozen more of these command histories we can go through uh, in the near future and look at, well, how does what's in here compare to other years? Did she spend a lot more time in the yard this year? Did she spend a lot more time training? Uh, what does it look like compared to Vietnam when she's actually in a war zone fighting? So we'll look at that in future installments. Thank you guys for watching. What are some other questions you guys have about numbers on the ship? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. Those donations go into the Curatorial Morale and Wellness Fund and into the restoration of the ship. There's a link in the description below where you can uh, click on to help support the museum that way. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and the museum. Thanks for watching.